Welcome back to Breakdowns R Us. Breakdowns R Us. Is the R backwards? Yes. 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 And upside down. Oh. That'd be a, that's just a D with a hat. A, a D with a little arm sticking out. <laughs> 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 Off to a solid start so far. Welcome to Phantom Power Hour. I'm Josh. And I am Risotto. That's a food. That is food. I'm now hungry. you're making me hungry. I'm hungry. I do like a good risotto. Like a mushroom risotto? Oh, yeah, man. Mm. You know... uh, I'm Jeremy, by the way. Not risotto. I think it's Uncle Ben's has a really good mushroom risotto. I've never used the package stuff. It's pretty good. I'm just overly fancy. I'm... I'm, Go on. Go on with your... Making your own risotto, unless you mess it up royally, is going to be better than a prepackaged risotto, for sure. But... Sometimes there's something about like throwing this pouch in a microwave for 90 seconds and then eating some tasty risotto. Okay. You know? I get it. I get it. Have you ever used this app? Meal Lime? The phone? No. <laughs> Meal Lime. Meal Lime. No. Okay. If you've never seen it, it's this little one. You can use it for free. If you ever argue with your wife, significant other, whoever you argue Yourself with. Yourself in food, the mirror. Dude, they have. You can start a meal plan like this is ours for this week. Oh, no it'll, way. It'll make you a grocery list. Ours is empty because we just went to the store. And like. And it just has recipes right there. It's built so in. good. And it, it'll make your grocery list. You can check off what you don't have. And like, it's so good. So basically you're like, this is what we're having this week. I'm 100%. So handy. I'm 100% getting that. Uh, free. You don't have. You can pay for it. And you get some different recipes. The free ones are great. There are two main reasons why I need that. One, it's like the best part of HelloFresh or something. Yeah. Minus having to get things delivered to you. Have you done HelloFresh? Um, I've not HelloFresh specifically. There's another one that I I got like um, a, a coupon for like a free week or whatever. Yeah. And it was pretty killer. My problem is, oh man, am I irresponsible when it comes to portion sizes? Yeah. And some of those aren't fit for somebody that, um, you know, wants to, when I was in school, I would always get extras. Mm -hmm. Can't get extra when it's a a meal sent to you. And well, you on it with HelloFresh, you could get like the extra protein, but it's so expensive. Yeah. So expensive. Whereas this I also add more chicken if you want. Exactly. With that, you can just go shop and. And they're good, dude. Yeah. They're good. The second reason why I need that is Jeremy, I'm a simple man. I could have every meal be rice and eggs, and I would be happy. I would be a happy boy. Okay, do you scramble, like make the rice, fry the rice, scramble like a fried rice thing, or what? I've done it. You know, my all-time favorite, though, especially after getting a rice cooker, it makes the rice so much better than boiling on the stove. Um, I get my rice over easy eggs, Mm. and then um, I I put a bunch of, like— pan seared peppers and onions and stuff in there so some spinach no but you gotta get the micronutrients somewhere you know okay. you know okay. so if every meal was that i'd be happy in addition to that taco bowls are my other oh, go-to and, and it's so easy it's so easy you just sear whatever you want put it in right oh. yep you could if you don't do this or haven't done this already if you like chicken you like you know, going to your local Qdoba, Chipotle, or what have you, just boil some chicken breast, shred that bad mumba jumma. You can get any taco seasoning. You can get your own combination of seasonings and flavorings or whatever, or get fajita chicken seasoning sauce and dump it in there, let it simmer. Man, homemade burrito bowls. Mm. My biggest life hack has been uh, Instapot. Yeah. Uh, buying the chicken frozen, which is way cheaper than yep. buying fresh, Putting that Sam's Club membership to use, putting whatever chicken I want for the week in the Instant Pot. I got a ton of chicken, and I can use it for whatever I want. My life hack when it comes to food, just uh, all I can think of is carousel. That's not the word. What do you, what do you call the thing? Rotisserie? No, no, that's a good guess. But the <laughs> the great word. Uh, my biggest life hack when it comes to food is just eating out of casserole dishes. Instead of a bowl, just a casserole dish. 
<laughs> See, like a carousel dish. A carousel dish. <laughs> it's just constantly spinning and moving. A carousel of casserole dishes. <laughs> just a big, lazy Susan of casserole dishes. Carousel casserole. Hmm. Do we just get demonetized? <laughs> Jokes on you. We're not monetized yet. So subscribe. Subscribe, like, hit that Do it. button. Smash the like button, some would say. Make friends in the comments. If you hit it hard enough, it turns blue. That's when you know you did it right. What are we spreading about today? misinformation? It does turn blue, right? You're change just going to have to find out. Let us know what color does the what button color change? Does it change? <laughs> I know it changes. Um, what are we talking about today? Uh, Can we just start a cooking show? Is that all right? Oh, I would love to. Except we have to use audio gear as utensils and like. We, oh, we, I could we, I could make a stew with a fifty seven. We could do that. Let us know, <laughs> and it would still be usable afterward. Yeah, I could plug it in. That's, that'd make a great video. That would it would make an even better video if the audio is exclusively of like the plugged in fifty seven that you're using to stir the I'm, stew and stuff. I hundred percent am down for this. Let us know what stew you want us to make. <laughs> we could just have it going right here. Just stir it with yeah, the fifty seven. One of the little camping stoves. You want to hear what the inside of a stew sounds like, but not Stewart. That took a turn. Okay. It would have to take a few turns. Now we're demonetized. <laughs> but up. Bam. Um, Jeremy, I, I, and you as well, probably, I have a fascination with uh, just hardware in general. And I, it could be classified as gas gear acquisition syndrome, but to me, it's more of the, I'm still in the curiosity and just wonderment phase of it all, mm -hmm. because I know what a lot of it does. Mm -hmm. We've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't have a lot of hands-on experience with all this outboard gear uh, doohickeys and whatchamacallits and gizmos and gadgets. Okay. Um, so I thought, let's let's talk a little bit about some of these things. Maybe, you know, this can be directed towards me and you can forget about them. Done. Done. Um, but how would you help direct me if I were to get an allotment of money and start to build out the hardware side of a home studio or even, you know, mid professional studio or some mm. hybrid space. Right. Um, almost like a, a, a buy guide for some, some hardware. Okay. Can I do it like interview style? You can, you like, can. Do I need to, uh, take on the persona of, of a particular kind of customer? I mean, just be you. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest the hardest <laughs> the best actor is always themselves unmask yourself <laughs> mask okay. off by the way the mask jim carrey Ooh, highly overrated movie broke the vhs tape i watched it so much <laughs> that's not even a lie <laughs> that was a, a pretty good movie actually when you're like seven was I? Okay. I'm just going to go to Sweetwater because it's easy. We we getting a... Not sponsored. We getting a screen cap? Oh, yeah. No Sorry. cap? Here. Up, down, up, Based. up, down, up, and X. What other What other hip lingo can I use? I didn't hear the first ones you used. No, I use cap and based. Hip lingo. Uh, I think pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> Quadrants. <laughs> Ball joint. <laughs> I don't know why that one got me so well. <laughs> I've been cutting my caffeine down, folks, and this is the first time uh, I saved it for for right now. So I'm going to be hyper. Everybody more hyper. wants more hyper, Jeremy. More often. I mean, my everybody's caffeine favorite thing about your channel is like, man, he's such a chill dude. He's so laid back. You just need to. Drink three of those. It was because I never got good sleep and I was, I just, caffeine just kept me moving. I was up like eight, 900 milligrams of caffeine, way too much. And I've, that's too like, much. Almost completely cut it off. This is the first I've heard of that. Well, my blood pressure was kind of high. So, well, you know, they told just got to thin it out with more caffeine. <laughs> I'm sure my doctor <laughs> would love you. Getting older, I got to try This is stuff. not medical advice. I feel better. I sleep better. This is good. Both good things. And now my, the brain fog is the big thing. 
Yeah. Uh, not having it. Anyway, what are we doing? Uh, hardware. hardware. Help, help me buy outboard gear. You might need to take some notes. I have this. something to take notes with. And I will kind of like pull this up. I have a ton of stuff in my cart. What is this all about? What you buying? Well, this is from our last studio build. Oh. Is there a good way to just get rid of everything in here? You could, instead of a cart, put, add it to a wish list instead. That's one more step. It is one more step. But I will do But that. you're supposed to have, what, 10,000 steps, I think? Where am I at right now? 6,700. We're going to have to start doing these standing on ellipticals. I got, I see my treadmill right there. Treadmill. Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, you're not a deer. It says deer run. He's making that up. I'm not. <laughs> what? Just trying to gaslight me in the first 10 minutes of the show. Oh, I'm technically gaslighting them, but they love it. That's true. You love it. You love gaslights. That is a meta gaslight right there. <laughs> <laughs> you love being you gaslit. Love being gaslit. <laughs> we're, already, we're already off to a fun one. Okay. Hardware. So I would approach this like... Any other like consult slash like studio design? Okay. So first question, and you can approach this as you. Totally, yeah. Um, or what you hope to do in the future, probably. So fly I into say, outer space. Like, will, will this help me get to outer space? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm ready to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with the assistance of other substances, but. Sure. Um, <laughs> so tell me, describe to me like what your setup is now, what you like about it, weaknesses that you could see. Okay. And then if like in a perfect world and you could expand, what would you like this thing to do? Okay. Uh, how specific do you want on the current setup? As specific as you want to be. Okay. Um, so I have the uh, Scarlet 18i8, I believe is what it is. Okay. Um, so that's my main interface. Those are the preamps I use. It's a super kind of run-of-the-mill at-home setup where you've just got the, the interface going straight to computer, um, doing all the conversion stuff itself. Um, I so think you, you have four preamps and then four line inputs. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, How old is this? The one that I have? Yeah. I think it's a Gen 3. So it's probably three years old or so now. So 2021? That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. That was the, they, and if that year, if you purchased it in 2021, that would be the new converter set. So, so it actually has a pretty decent, ones. actually has a pretty decent yeah. converter. And we can we can double check. It is Gen three. I know that much. I think Gen four is what's out now. It's no, it's the one that you're looking at. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's my that's my interface. Mm -hmm. um, HS eight monitors, no sub. HS eight. How big's your room? Uh, it is currently a living room. So I think it's the whole room is probably like super guesstimating 20 by 20 something like that it is not a optimal environment and you're backed up against the wall probably yes okay. yeah yeah um these have getting off the beaten path but i'm kind of looking as we go here okay perfect yeah you have the room control and, yeah. and stuff on i there. used to have these uh, honestly one of the best investments i ever made it was the first real piece of gear that I got in the recording kind of aspect. And the only reason I did it was because they're large diaphragm. Um, and I wanted them to have an easier way to practice bass at home. That wasn't just through an amp because I had understood the I benefits of kind of practicing almost in more of a studio type of environment to hear the nuances a lot more mm -hmm. to, to clean up my playing and to understand dynamic control in that environment, as opposed to just coming out of a subwoofer, you know, I'm surprised I didn't realize these were like seven ninety seven. that price has gone up. Not from when I got it. Interesting. They were, I think I bought mine like in 2011, maybe 2010. I think I got mine in 13, 2013 and they were 400 a piece. Okay. 
Yeah, so pretty on par with the pricing. Uh, the ones now, I think, are a newer generation. I don't know if anything has changed, but... Sub or no? No sub. No sub. No. Are they I, on stands? They are... They used to be on stands. Um, after I kind of changed up the whole setup, they are now on RLX pads. Okay. Lifted off the desk, so... Asking a lot of questions about the monitoring. No, that's all good. I mean, monitoring is important, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, outside of that, I have, I do have headphones. I don't mix out of them. I've learned them more, but um, they're not great. They're the, um, what's the other A company that's not Audio Technica? Uh, AKG. Yes. I don't remember the line. They're really old. I did get new ear cups for them, though. After we saw your, um, I saw you got the Deconis. Deconis. Yeah. yeah, I ordered a set for my headphones, and it's a game changer. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I don't. They sent those to me like just to try out, and they're like, "If you like them, make a video." I don't know how to make a video out of that product, but they're legit. Yeah, <laughs> like I switched out all of my Audio Technica uh, M whatever, or whatever whatever they are. But man, they're they're fantastic. Um, mine are the clothes back. Okay, I'm not going to remember the line, but I know that they were like a hundred bucks when I got them. Sure. Okay. Um, so we got the Scarlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do we have? Um, I I do have a Furman. I have a power conditioner. Okay. Um, partially because I was having what I now know was a ground loop issue. That's a long story. We won't get into it. But I had a ground loop issue. It's been sorted out since then. But now I do have uh, my. So I run off a of PC. I don't know how much that's going to matter to any of this. But mm-hmm. um, part of the problem was my um, PC and my other peripherals being on the same circuit. So now I have them split up, and that's because because of the graphics card portion. From what I understand, it produced a coil line. Oh. Um, and then when that was active and the speakers, the HS eights have your, um, your TRS input, Mm -hmm. which I use straight from the Scarlet with the current setup, because of the type of house I have, my main entertainment was also directly above. So I was using my HS eights as TV monitors as well, because they have an additional quarter inch input. So I had eighth inch split left and right to those. And that's what caused the ground loop. Yeah. So I can see that. Yeah. I said I wasn't going to go into the long story. I guess it wasn't that long, but I do have a, I have a Furman power conditioner. Um, and then I have a couple different like MIDI keyboards. One's USB, one's actual MIDI. Okay. Um, what types of thing, what are you, what are you using it for? Or what would you like to use it for? Currently the biggest use case I have at home is, um, I mean, honestly, a huge amount of it is, is just practicing. I, I find me personally, when I'm learning songs by ear, it's much better for me to have my um, bass and or guitar coming out of the same listening source as the recording. Might not be for everybody, but for me, it helps me more accurately determine if I'm actually walking mm-hmm. in with what's going on. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, um, a lot of demoing. I... At one point, I was doing more mix-centric stuff, but never to be the final version of anything. It was more so like helping out friends, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And then writing. So, Okay. Sounds like you don't need any outboard gear. Well, yeah, but (laughs) sometimes I just want stuff. What What do you feel like you want to have happen that's not happening? Um, what I, some of the things that I do legitimately want at some point would be, um, options for a solid kind of vocal signal chain. So I can feel, um, I can get an okay vocal sound if somebody comes over and Mm -hmm. wants to do some like collab stuff or whatever. Um, but I would, I would like to have the opportunity really it boils down to having the opportunity to gain the experience from having some outboard gear for signal chains like vocals um okay bass stuff understanding like what what is it that having 
these different kind of preamps is going to do for me. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, I can read and talk to you about like, well, an LA2A works really well on this. And then I can use a plugin and kind of get that. But maybe this is all in my head, but I still feel like if I had my fingertips on the dials, there's going to be a different level of, of understanding that comes with that. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah. And I, I experienced that with some gear too. Like there's, I mean, dependent upon how you use it, if it's a mixed context, if it's a tracking context, how, how important that is in what stage you're using it. Mm -hmm. Like I had an, an old Yuri 1176 in here and it was magical. And I was like, Oh, I learned how to use an 1176 so fast having it in the room as opposed to a plug-in. I don't know why it was different, but it absolutely was. Yeah. And you could say, I mean, to put it in more of a widely received environment, I think would be to consider like amp models. You can get a model mm -hmm. of a, uh, a Vibro King mm -hmm. or you can get a real Vibro King and you could have the argument all day of one sounds better, one sounds worse. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just like, how does it feel in the room? What is that experience that you get in person? Okay. And how does that translate through the microphone into the recording? That kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and that's the different part about using hardware, I think, that a lot of people don't take into account. Like, one-to-one, -one, can you make software work? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, We just did a whole episode about how you can make software work. <laughs> yeah. It, it's... I like outboard because I mean sometimes people don't finish their records here. Yes. So when tracks are leaving my building, I want them to sound as good as possible. And the way I can do that is to imprint as much vibe and color in there. That's that is in conjunction with the artist's vision of the project when it leaves. Mm -hmm. So I like to use outboard gear for that reason. Now there's a whole part of this that talks about converters and you having a Scarlet, if you're looking at outboard gear, should you get outboard gear or or upgrade your converters? Right. A few years ago, I would probably say, no, you're going to need really good converters. Like back when I had my, my 002? Yeah. The, the, yeah. I mean, uh, I had a 002, 003. Mm -hmm. Don't like those. Yeah. But now, <laughs> like most modern converters are fantastic. And... I don't really think it matters all that much anymore. If it's if it's good, it's good, and ninety percent of them are good. Um, the difference you have is like I mean I talk about my burls, and those are really expensive, mm -hmm. and people be like, "Well, if you're saying it doesn't matter. What do you have the burls? The burls solve like a completely different problem. Like the conversion on there is really good, uh, as most converters are." But it also, there's a ton of iron built yeah, into that has, system. it has character as well, right? Yeah, you're hitting transformers on the way in. You're hitting transformers on the way out. Like, it's its its own thing. Like, just as much as going, like, the more pristine side. And there's just as much validity to that. Um, so I would say, like, even if you want to incorporate a couple pieces, you're fine with the 18i8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, 18i8. Um, I will say... Um, that's my current setup and what I currently use for it. A long-term goal, and I think that there's a lot of people that might feel the same, eventually it would be so cool to have a mic'd up drum kit at home, to have uh, a closet with some amps in it, you know? And I don't need it, mm -hmm. but it would be... It, you asked, like, what I could foresee, and I could foresee myself having, like... Um, like an A tier home studio, not like S tier, you know, I don't have okay, yeah. a wall of synthesizers and vintage yeah. gear, but if you wanted to come get something recorded that could stand on its own two legs, uh, in the DSP environment in the, um, like getting streamed and sounding like it's professional, then that's, that's kind of like a, I think a solid future plan or, or dream, you know? So in that case, I would for sure need uh, more preamps. I need more lines at my disposal and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just looking at like. Cause I don't believe the 18 I eight has a dat. 
You have eight at N. Okay. Um, so you could expand there. You have uh, you have four line inputs and two line outputs. I imagine two of the line outputs are already taken from speakers. Mm-hmm. So you have SPDIF. That's another thing you yeah. could do. Um, you're USB because Correct. you're PC. Yep. Does PC have Thunderbolt? Um, some. Is that just a Mac thing? Um, I don't believe so. So this this could be a good move. Hello, where'd the picture go? Ah, stepping up to the claret. And I've got one of these um, in the rack, and the preamps are great. Mm-hmm. Um, what you could do here is, like, obviously this would expand your I.O. You also have ADA in and out, because mm-hmm. if you want to expand into doing that stuff, you could run ears. You could have other auxiliary outputs. You could have a whole other set of eight inputs and outputs. So that gives you, like, you could expand into something like a pharaoh fish and just get a bunch of io that's locked to whatever you want Mm -hmm. so and that's i mean 9.99 that's not terrible for something that's pretty good i guess they sound really good then you get two headphone outputs right on the front so you could spend a lot more for the same flexibility for sure um now if you're talking like specific Outboard gear, if we go that route, then what types of outboard would be important to you? Well, like what jobs do you want done? So let me, I think the best way to think about it is, is how am I getting jobs done now in the box? Mm-hmm. Um, I use some form of like a channel strip plug-in. Um, it changes. I like to experiment with different ones. I'm still learning kind of the nuances of, uh, you know, what sounds like what, um, one I use a lot is, um, the, I think it's just, I don't remember the brand that, that makes it, but it's like an API, um, emulation of just like a, a channel strip of theirs. I wish I could remember more about it. So that's not helpful, but some kind of, Something at the front that just like gives it a little bit of character, and then for what type of source? This is predominantly for bass. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and honestly, a lot of this is just from the years of being in here, always asking like, "What's my what's my signal flow? What am I going into? How am, mm-hmm. am I getting the sound that I like so much?" Um, and then I'll get some kind of compressor that I like, depending on the type of track I'm doing. It'll my tone, my bass. My bass, bass tone, mm-hmm. which is based, <laughs> is based on um, either my actual rig taking a direct out from my head or preamp that I'm using uh, in combination with my pedal board and all that. Or sometimes it'll be using something like parallax or um, mm-hmm. if I'm doing more of like a Motown centric kind of tone, then I, I actually like using uh, Corey Wong's Neural DSP. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes there's amp emulation stuff in there, but regardless, I will still usually do the channel strip and then um, either one or two compressors into that because I usually don't okay. like the built in stuff for bass specifically in those. Uh, modelers and what types of compression are you leaning on there um a lot of the time i will try a different like 1073 like an opto or a fet kind of type of compressor and again a lot of what i'm saying is i don't 1073 would be a preamp so you're saying opto and fet that would that would be like la2a 1176 yes i misspoke the 1176 yeah my bad the black box yep yeah okay um and a lot of it. So you like you like the dirty aspect. Sometimes, yeah, okay. but especially on bass. Okay. Give me give me a little bit more saturation so I can poke through. Okay. Um, because I'm not trying to add saturation before going in 
via a pedal too often unless I want a specific dirty tone. But if I want a clean tone, then I want to get the saturation in the box from a compressor or something, mm. if that makes sense. Okay. And so you now you're looking to, f- you want to do that with hardware. I think I would like to have the option to do it with hardware. Um, but my problem is I have these plugins, the we'll take 1176 as an example. Um, I have a few different flavors of the plugin from a few different companies. Um, and I hop in back and forth between those. Sometimes I notice the differences, sometimes I don't. But when it comes to actual physical pieces of hardware, I know that you can get the real deal 1176. You can get something that it's like modeled with the same topology from another company. You know, there's other options, and I don't, I wouldn't know where to start. Mm-hmm. So, first thing you need like a, a decent preamp, and I can see you go and, I mean, these preamps are good, but if you want to also incorporate hardware, you could go like back out of mm-hmm. your recording software into that into something else. Um, that can get a little interesting. Because you're like D to A, A to D, like multiple times. So you're converting the signal multiple times. Yeah. Um, which one can add latency to, it can get a little weird um, if your converters aren't like S tier converters or A tier, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are solid converters. Um, so you could do a couple of things. Like you could either invest in like <laughs> pedals. Mm -hmm. which you could use in multiple situations because you go out and play live and do something like the grace yeah, that lets you put that in the chain. If you want more of a static thing that you're kind of building up a studio with, um, there's a a couple companies. Like if you want to get like an 1176, you're going to drop some coin. Totally, yeah. Now... This might be hot take city. Look, Universal Audio, the twenty five ninety nine. Uh, Yuri was the f- first iteration of the eleven seventy six, as far as I know. Um, they were then made by Universal Audio, so these aren't like original. And <laughs> even when there's clones, people are like, oh, well, you're just cloning Universal Audio. Well, Universal Audio is cloning Yuri. Mm-hmm. So, and same with the LA-2A, like Teletronics does that. <laughs> like, it, I, these things all have like a lineage that goes back further than we realize. So, these are clones of clones of clones of clones of clones. Like um, a Stormtrooper. Sure. I don't follow the lore, but... um. So, I mean, you see right here on this page, like, I pull up 1176 and we've got like 2600 bucks, 160 bucks for a pedal platform, mm-hmm. which, which I do not, want that pedal. Not too bad. Uh, and I'm, I've got one that's the, what is it, the one I bought? The, it's the, has the gold knobs on it. Oh, uh, that's the amp, right? No. Are, are you talking about a UA pedal? Hang on. Nope. Nope. I'm curious now. Oh, the origin. Yeah. 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 I thought you were talking about a UA pedal. I was like, you got one? What did you no. get? So, like, I have the Cali 76, which, I mean, that's a pretty faithful recreation of 1176 in a pedal. Now, there's a few things that you're just not going to get mm-hmm. from a pedal. And honestly, like, something like the Clark Technic. Maybe it's not that bad, but the thing that most people like about an 1176, you're not going to be able to pull from Clark Technic because you're not going to be hitting that kind of same vibe of iron. I mean, maybe there's those circuits in there. There's transformers in there, but different transformers will break up differently. And so these aren't one-to-one. So if people are buying a Clark Technic, they're like, why doesn't it sound like the $2,600 version? It's not really supposed to. It's more of the... the would you say it's the quality of components? Because maybe, I don't know. I mean, I really don't. I know there's a stupid markup on a lot of outboard gear. And that's a lot of times where I'm going to buy it used whenever I can or buy it broken if you can. Yeah. Because they're not terribly hard to fix if you know how to solder. But if you're getting the super cheap ones, 
if those break, they're harder to fix because they're micro components on a PCB that was populated by a machine anyway. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason the price is lower. I don't know. That's a whole other discussion. But if we can go somewhere like Audioscape, these dudes are making killer gear. This is not sponsored. I don't think that has to be said. <laughs> um, so different revisions of the 1176, and you like the black, which that's what I would pick for base anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is like 900 bucks That's and so they, s- they sound great. And I mean, if you wanted to, you could buy it used, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I have not tried audio escapes 1176 specifically, but I do have their G style compressor mm-hmm. and their LA 2A. Um, which there's a video coming about that one. Whenever that lifts, whenever I can talk about it. I can say that I have it, but whatever. <laughs> but they can't see it. <laughs> right. Can't show it to you. Um, I mean, their stuff is gr- really good from what I have played with. Well, and I mean, the, the G-Comp was It's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's other companies like Stam that are doing like kind of that same thing, making clones of clones. Um. And there's even well, Behringer's. I was going to say, what if now. what if I'm on the Behringer budget though? I don't know why you would need a thirty three six zero nine, but I guess Behringer did just do that. But we can look at that in a second. But so if we've bought you a new interface, you're looking at nine hundred. If you wanted to buy this off the line, now you're at nineteen hundred. And you had also mentioned like an LA two way. Like, if we're just getting the base dream set up here. So, 1099. And that's through Audioscape as well? Mm hmm. I mean, you don't have to go through Audioscape. They're one of the companies that I think are reliable, but not paying the full ticket price for yeah. small, the name brand small version. Small company, US. It's it's cool. What's like, your take on Warm? Because isn't Warm doing something similar? Warm Audio. I just have very little experience with it. Like, yeah. I don't. I have n- neither good nor bad feelings about Warm. I've got a cable from Warm Audio, mm-hmm. and it's been awesome. <laughs> Is it warm? Uh, it actually stays quite cool. <laughs> That's ironic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think getting into those clones can definitely be cringe. And I think there's certain companies that do it a little more cringy than others. Yeah. Like, and there's a whole, like, this is a a completely, I guess, anecdotal part of this that, I mean, just like PV. I don't give PV a whole lot of love because I hate the logo. (laughs) Gotcha. (laughs) But they make some solid gear. Didn't PV make the original 5150? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they make the, what is it, the super heavy bass that everybody wants? The Millennium, I think. I don't remember, but I, I see them on Marketplace and they go too fast for me to pick one up. Yeah. Um, but just like Warm Audio is kind of that for me. I just don't like the logo. And I know that is a stupid reason to have like a bias. I kind of like it because it's like swooshy. All right. <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> but... I mean, the the thing about Warm, uh, I mean, everybody I know that has had Warm Audio gear, they dig it. Mm-hmm. Certain pieces more than others. Um, I mean, I know Andrew Masters had like a whole rack of Warm Audio 1073s, and he, yeah. he freaking loved them. I I can't speak too much on the cringe nature of, of what you were saying, but from a customer side, I appreciate that there are companies out there doing that kind of thing. And... I, I know that there are arguments of like it's cloning is almost like stealing and all yeah. and there's not innovation and stuff. But as a customer, like let's be real. If you're a customer, do you really care about that? Or do you want right. a good piece of hardware at an affordable price? I think it yeah, I definitely think it depends what you want to do with it. 
uh, like if you're going to actually use the gear and you could actually use those features, sure, go for it. There's the two sides to that coin are like if I'm going to go if I'm going to buy some gear, um, like if I'm looking at this as a as a business because I'm a I am a business, mm-hmm. uh, which I know in and of itself would probably be like, well, Jeremy, you're looking at this from the standpoint of an investor, not necessarily the audio perspective. Fair, but there's whole there there's a whole part of this where like I bought the 1073s that I have for like twenty five hundred bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. Now those same preamps are like seventy thousand a piece. Yep, it's stupid. I'm not saying it makes sense. <laughs> My Enron Connections TSL 4V, the compressor that you most of the time are going into, because mm-hmm. uh, your chain in here is normally. A 573, which is basically like a 1073 clone. There you go, another clone, Vintec. Fantastic. Yeah. My One of my favorite preamps for bass. Now, Jeremy, will you tell the good people why I don't get the real 1073? It's because Jeremy thinks that the bass is like, you just get whatever's left over. You get the leftovers. Shut up. <laughs> no. You know, you want to know, like, you can. Sp- I can spin this positively. So I need my 1073s for... Uh, Normally kick in, kick out, and snare top. Because he just cares about drums so much. Because they need EQ'd. Those have EQs. The 573 has no EQ. So is your tone just already so good that I don't need to EQ you? Oh, man. Just spinning this around on me like a toxic relationship. (laughs) (laughs) What do we say about gaslighting? (laughs) You love it. You love it. You love the clone. Bass is way more forgiving, and it's totally. way easier yeah. to change in the moment. Like, ideally, all the tones are perfect going in. Kick and snare have to change like crazy. And going back to what I was saying about the customer as a player, I I just want to sound good. Yeah. I don't care if it's the name brand or if it's if then it's a Then clone. that opens up a whole lot of doors, honestly. Like, if you're not worried about resale, if you're not worried about... Well, I said as a player, I still think that as somebody investing this kind of money, when you see the difference in price, but you think of it in terms of longevity, mm-hmm. um, part of it is almost like playing the stocks, right? Some of it is yeah. kind of gambly, gamble esque. You, you can't go into it trying to make money. Like- Correct. <laughs> but you can go into it thinking, well, this company has been around for a while. You look at their past kind of resale and. If you're just trying to break even, or or not make as much, not have as much of a loss, if you're mm-hmm. going to resell it, I can I can get behind that, you know. Yeah. But or vice, or you, the company's not going to be around for a while. Mm-hmm. Like my inward connections, the reason that thing is so sought after now is because you can't get it. That's fair. Yeah. And that's it. It's extraordinarily expensive. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, not only did I effectively not pay to own it. I mean, obviously I have to sell it for this to make sense, but I was paid to rent it kind of in a weird, mm-hmm. in a weird backwards way. So you can never expect that out of your gear and you'll never get that out of like clone of a clone company. You kind yeah. of have to go with like the top tier stuff. If you want that, if that's not your concern, there's a whole lot more doors open here. So now that I have, uh, I've agreed and validated the importance of thinking about the resale value when you're investing this kind of money on on gear. Mm -hmm. Now, at the very beginning of the episode, you said, I just got to be me. So, Jeremy, if there's something I know about myself, it's that I don't like selling gear. Okay. For various reasons. Perfect. So, with that in mind, and I just want it to sound good, while also I don't don't want to sacrifice understanding this sound Mm -hmm. like the 1176 sound i don't want to sacrifice that aspect to save a couple hundred bucks on something that's called an 1176 and it sounds pretty good okay you know what i mean okay then i got i got like the perfect thing for you then here so there's a small company called hairball can you solder i can oh bro we about to save you some money if anything i like soldering are you about to show me some hardware kits maybe Oh, this makes me. Uh, there is li- Behringer is like pumping out the Dude, ads I, this week. I what you, is I've going been seeing on? so much Behringer stuff this last week or two. Twelve seventy three, two stack ten seventy threes for six ninety nine. We're gonna 
we're going to have to take a closer look at some of those things at I some point. sell both of mine and get 20 of those. <laughs> like, that's 40 channels. <laughs> that, that would be a hilarious video. You just have a wall of Behringer 1073s. Like, if it were any other company, like, I don't know. Morally, there's a couple things with Behringer. I don't know. That's another video, maybe. Okay. Hairball audio. I'm writing this down. Um, the fact that if it's DIY in any manner gets mm-hmm. me excited. Okay. Well, then we can talk. Look at the prices on these bad boys. Ooh. Yeah. So you can get a complete kit for six fifty. Wow. Um no, I think that just means like on the partial kit, I think you have to order a couple parts. So you'll receive a all of the hard to source parts for the build. Obtaining the rest of the parts is up to you. Note in the current supply chain crisis. All ordering of missing parts end up costing more and simply purchasing the complete kit. So, like, the Fair. easier things, they're like, go buy it yourself. Here's the harder piece. Or you can hop on, like, Mouser or something and right. see what kind of what kind of parts you can grab. So, they've basically done the hard work for you and tested the parts and figured out, like, okay, these are the closest to the original circuits. And that's all arbitrary, of course. Mm-hmm. But I know a handful of people who use these hairball things, and they're great. They sound great. That's so exciting to me. Like I, I love pedal kits and like I, I, I'm working up at some point to to do an amp kit. It partially scares me. I'll be honest. The whole you know touch the thing in a wrong way and you can die part is a little terrifying. <laughs> but something like that is really like. I was a kid, man. I, I would stay up all night building Legos, and this scratches that itch in such a vigorous way for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's fun yeah. to do. And I've, I've built a lot of, like, 500 series stuff, which that's a whole other thing if you want to get into. I've looked into that. Mm-hmm. The entry price for 500 series stuff is a lot. From, what do you mean? Like, getting the whole you can build like your, lunchbox. You can and build your own rack. Oh man, okay, Jeremy's gonna, just you can show you me the world. Hole. Hang on, come here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to Cappy. So you're gonna see me next week. I'm just gonna be covered in soldering burns and stuff. Jeff Steiger out of Nashville, Tennessee owns. You know, Cappy. you you did show me Cappy stuff uh, uh, months ago, yeah. and I did I peruse the website. I'll be honest; it's a difficult website to peruse. The website's awful. <laughs> uh, get past it because this stuff's incredible. Um, I on my drums, I have like eight channels, seven right now because one needs repaired. Um, I have VP twenty eights, um, fantastic preamp, really good, and they're like two hundred and fifty bucks if you can solder them. I like, I, it took me two days. I soldered eight. It was fine, um, but you can also get the racks. So. The hard part is finding it. <laughs> 500 series right kit. Very, very first one. So you don't want the 51X. You want the 511 VPR. That's like the very the standard 500 series stuff. Mm-hmm. So kits and bundles. He does 11 space racks, which I have one. And then you need to get the power supply. Mm-hmm. Um, what is he selling? The switch mode power supply? Uh, he's selling. Okay, this is new stuff for me. All right. I can't tell if it's a disgruntled Jeremy or, or bummed out Jeremy. So this is kind of cool here. So you have options. So you've got... The 511 VPR XLR bundle, so that would mean the back of it has XLR jacks. That's what mine does. There's also a DB25 rack. Mm. That's cheaper and a lot less to solder. Um, I don't know what the filtered bundle. I'm not sure what that is. It's like there's more options than 
when I was doing this. This is a filtered version of an XLRX. That means the back plane behind slots 9 and 11 has electrical components to filter out potential remnants of outboard switch mode power supply. Interesting. So is it almost, am I understanding that it's just kind of cleaning up any type of electrical frequency uh, yeah, nonsense? Like some of the issues with the 500 series stuff is like power. Um, you're not getting as much power to certain components as you normally would. And there's like whole uh, people who know way more about circuit design than I do. They could speak to it in, in way better terms. By the time it gets to this slot, these parts have already sucked up this amount. I don't know if it's that or if it's relative closeness to the power supply in the box. I don't know. Whatever. Um, but like in this build is stupid easy and it's 350. That's not bad. So because I was looking at the the other like lunch boxes and stuff on on Sweetwater, mm -hmm. and that was ranging, if I remember right, anywhere from like nine to fifteen hundred dollars, that kind of thing. Yeah, if you get like a finished rack, they're expensive. Yeah. Um, now if you go with a rack like I think Cranborn makes them, and they can be your interface and like there's a whole lot of that's connectivity. Cool. That's pretty cool. And and I think that price is justified. It's but it's a completely different way to look at the rack. We looked at one together that was it might have been the same company, but it was the uh, five hundred series rack and an interface and the power supply and uh it was portable. Yep. That's cram I think that was Cranborn probably. Dude, that thing was sick. Yeah, it's like an all in one solution and you could turn it into whatever you want, right? Yeah. Like it can be a bank of preamps, it can be a channel strip, whatever. This is the, the cool part about the 500 series platform. You can kind of do whatever you want within certain power constraints. But with Cappy, here's one you can build. It's 11 spaces, mm -hmm. more than you need, but you could grow or you can build like your own channel strip in here. And even on the hairball stuff, like you could get a 500 series compressor if you want. So if you wanted to build a Cappy preamp and then get your compressor, well, here you go. So oh, that sounds so fun. And they're not crazy complicated circuits. Like mm -hmm. you can get it crazy complicated circuits, but yeah. it's you're in a unique place because you're not afraid to jump into that side. A lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, if you're afraid to do that, I can't suggest, and I was terrified of like even trying to repair an instrument cable by soldering it until I got um, a Stumac pedal kit. I think it was like, I got it on sale for like 80 bucks. It's mm -hmm. a, like a tube screamer type of circuit. Um, and that just like, it blew past any kind of fear and like exploded into excitement and desire where I was ordering boxes of components, spools of electrical wire and stuff and downloading schematics for different topologies and all that kind of stuff. It's it. I, I don't know. Not everybody has that kind of um, enjoyment out of that type of task. Mm -hmm. But if at any point in your life you liked to put together a Lego or you liked even like solving a puzzle or something, to me, it scratches that same itch or Especially if you did like model cars. Did you ever do that? Did you ever make? Oh, yeah. What about model tanks? Uh, I did more like planes and RC cars. And okay. Little robots that would walk around the house. I used to go to Hobbytown, USA, if you're familiar with that spot. Um, uh, and I think maybe like once every two months or so, my parents would let me get a model tank. Now, here's the cool part. <laughs> <laughs> These model tanks had engines in them and came with a rubber tread and you just plugged a double A battery into it and then they were motorized. And for whatever reason, getting them wet didn't kill it. I don't know how, but I would take those to my creek and I would have little battles and have them like <laughs> driving at each other and stuff. It was so good. Good times. Uh, yeah, it does like scratch that same itch because I, I used to build like RC stuff with my dad all the time. Mm -hmm. and like little more Gas they were called side or electric. Uh, both. Both. I think we did both. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's there's tons of stuff on Cappy's website if you can solder and you want to get into this cheap. 
that's a really good way to go. Well, I didn't mean to turn this into a, like an all DIY build, but uh, just set me up with like, give me give me a list of let's stick with just base channel. That's where I make most of my living. That's what I would want to invest in mm -hmm. up front on getting the best sound and experience with the hardware. So okay. um, what would your suggestions be for getting me uh, a preamp? Maybe do you even recommend like a 500 series style of of EQ or anything? You can, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then maybe how would you if this were, you know, with your understanding and your build, how would you would you cascade your your compression? Would you get a compressor and then maybe like a limiter? Okay. Both of those things like Sure. So maybe we can look at it a couple ways. I would get if you want to expand and eventually do like drums at home and get the, get the three hundred and fifty dollar rack. It's dumb not to. Yeah. If yeah. you can put it together, that puts you in the five hundred series world pretty easy. So, um, that's three hundred and fifty bucks, which is bonkers because if you get a ten slot anywhere else, it's well, like nine hundred bucks at least. Yeah. I don't know. So let's go to. Uh, how much is the power supply for it? Uh, it was 90 bucks. Oh, that's not bad at all. Or I could be like somebody I know and build my own power supply. He's got the kits. <laughs> if you want to see those, this is what I did. Because it can power multiple items. Um, that's 350 if you want to go that route. Mm -hmm. So 700 and you're all in. But you don't have to go that route if you don't want to. That was scary. I did, I wouldn't. Do I, that I believe it. I would rather <laughs> take a the take a try at building an amp first before trying to build a full blown power supply. Yeah, not not a great time, um, but it was very doable and it, and it was fine. So haven't caught fire yet. Where's the preamps here? Doing all the knocking on wood. The website. Oh, modular pod op amps, relays. Sending boxes, switches, transformers, transistors. If you're watching and you can see the the screen grab, tell Jeremy where the preamps are. Let him know. <sighs> so bad. 500 series rack. I know I'm looking right past it. Assembled modules. Okay, we don't want that. I want the DIY modules. Let's close this. Are you maybe like one category too deep? Here we go. Preamps. I don't know why that was so much easier. So, um, the one for bass, like I use the VP28s. You might want like a 312DI. If you do something like that. And that gives you like a line input on yeah. the front of it. So you got the choice between variable and stepped here. I don't, if you're wanting to like recreate it, that's where you would want stepped. Uh, you, you'd be fine with variable. So, Entire bundle, $303. There you go. All done. And that would be like the equivalent of getting an API 312 preamp, which those are like seven, eight hundred bucks. Yeah. And I get to build them myself. Yep. There you go. For some people, that's such a negative. To me, that's like the biggest positive. Now, if you don't want to build it, one of my favorites is a Vintech 573 for bass. Mm -hmm. um, I'd pick it up used because they're freaking tanks tanks and let's, we can see what that goes for i'm not at searching <laughs> <laughs> i'm just mashing keys like 575 ish so Depending on the time, like, is it worth two hundred and seventy-five bucks for you? Like, you can you could easily solder that preamp in a day. Yeah. So, is your day worth two fifty? And do you want to have the fun doing it? Mm -hmm. The five seventy-three is fantastic. The three twelve is fantastic. Um, I like the five seventy-three on base, but this that would be a way to save a little bit more money uh, if you're wanting an EQ.
And if you don't want to go uh, 500 series, the Vin- Vintec does make a racked version of that 73. It would just oh, okay. be like a – I know they have a 273. It's made like two – 73 circuits in there. Yeah. I'm sure there's a one channel version. There is an X73i, which has like a basically the preamp EQ all in one unit. Incredible. So, I mean, EQs are kind of like what's your flavor type right. of thing. I right. like a 1073 style EQ on my base, but it's also not necessary. Um, this is true. I think for me, and this this is subject to change as as my like tonal palette grows and stuff. I think for me, I would want an EQ if I were to even use one to not only be an EQ, but also maybe add some kind of zhuzh to it, mm-hmm. have some kind of character. So that would, yeah, that'd probably be either a ten seventy three or like a Poltec style thing. I do. I have used some Poltec uh, plug-in versions of stuff, yeah, and I do like that that sound, like that Poltec bass sound, because it's insane low end. It, insane. The ten ten seventy three stuff tends to like translate better for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder if I can just do this. Like this is something that I don't shop for very often. Oh, for sure. And for EQs, like you're gonna spend some money. So, like, you're looking at about a thousand bucks for an EQ. Yeah. And but these a, are like all. Like a 1073 style EQ. Yeah. So, if you had like a 573 plus this, you're looking at like 1600 bucks, at which point it may make more sense to go with like an X73, like 1375. So, here you get like the same. Like 73 style preamp that I really dig, and this is brand new, uh, with a super nice EQ. And there's a, another level to this one that's just like maybe it's just the X73, maybe just the X73. Okay, so this is like the very like that taken to a whole other extreme. So, like 1800 bucks. So, there's a couple more, a little bit more coin for like. One channel. Yeah. So there's different ways to look at this. Like if you want to be able to expand into doing more than that, or you just get one really solid channel strip and this will work for just about anything you want to do. Yeah. And see everything that we've talked about and, and brainstormed about and looked up is exactly why I would be at such a loss trying (laughs) to do this myself. And I've, (laughs) I've read forums, I've watched videos, I've looked at things, and it's like the same can probably be said for the world of amplifiers or guitars, but in my mind, those are easier to really latch on to what you like about them and how they sound. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to this stuff, it's like... It's the same thing, though. You just got to use it. Right, but I can go and I can pick up a guitar somewhere or borrow a guitar from a buddy and be like, yeah, oh, this thing's cool. It, it's harder to do that with preamps. That's yeah. for sure. Well, like there's so many of them are just recreations of the same flavor. Yeah. And then it comes down to like, okay, what companies seem to be doing it? Not even necessarily the best, but. The price to performance. Yeah. Performance and- price performance ratio is a big thing. Ventec is, is solid. Um, I love the low. I don't know what the, the low end in there. Sometimes I prefer it to my 1073s, four bass specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a very, this will do more than what you need it to do. And then you pair that with like the hairball 1176 and you're good. Like, <laughs> what was that? 650. Mm-hmm. So it could be 2400. Then if you want an LA two way on top of that, 3500 bucks and yes. you're all in. And you could use all this with your current interface. Yeah. That's it's not not so steep to get into it, and that's a that's a solid front end. Yeah, of course, but, just you don't have a microphone, but <laughs> no. you're going di for a lot of this stuff. Does this thing have an input? Yes. Okay. So that I mean that would be like a bass player's dream setup. Yeah. 
The other thing you could do is just get a distressor and kind of get the same flavor. Always trying to slip the distressor into the conversation. But I've ever since we've had that conversation and you had uh, your video specifically on it. I I keep an eye out for him to see if I can catch a good deal. Yeah. And the I think the so many people look for the British mode. I don't know. I've never I don't have that. So I've never like been. Oh, I really need the British mode. Mm, But you can find them pretty cheap (laughs) if used in their tanks, too. So. Now, I, I can feel some people if they've if they've gotten into it this deep and they're thinking like it's that much. What would we say? Like. For for all those three things, like yeah, thirty five hundred bucks. Thirty five hundred bucks, all that for one base channel. What? Why can't you just just high Z into your interface and put some? You can. Yeah. You totally can. Yeah. That's a different way to work. I mean, it depends what you're trying. To, that's why I asked, "How are you using it? What do you want to do with it?" Yeah. And your thing was, I want to get in there and turn knobs. I want to see what this does. I want to see how I react to these circuits. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing. And like, that's a big piece of hardware and using it and how it affects the performance itself. And the other piece is like, are you sending these files out to be mixed? Maybe you're somebody who is is at home, but you need a really good front end because you're professionally doing things. And that is 90% of if I'm tracking at home, it's because yeah. those are getting sent off. To something else mm-hmm. do a lot of remote um recording so and nobody would complain if you're like hey what do you want i have got 1176 la2a mm-hmm. nobody really cares if it's like oh, are you talking about a teletronics la2a like nobody's gonna ask you that like yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be like, i have an 1176 i have an la2a like okay i know those flavors yeah. i know generally what they're gonna do uh and this is like essentially a 1073 with the eq um, like we even saw, like you could do it cheaper with the X73i for 500 bucks cheaper. So I don't even necessarily know the difference between those two things, but they just look a little different. They look a little bit different. Mostly input. On, oh yeah, just still an instrument input. I don't really know the difference between the two, but I'm sure both of them are gonna sound great. Power supply. Oh, what does the X73 need a power supply? That might be the dinger. Here's the question. We're getting out of the weeds a little bit, huh? So this needs a power like supply does, too. Yeah. Okay, so that's another thing to take into account that I did not realize because 573 is just popping a rack and they work. Yeah. But one power supply will get you four, so... <laughs> Yep, okay. So that needs a power supply too. They both need power supplies, right? So add four hundred bucks. Well, and that that alone starts to make it look more enticing to go the five hundred route instead then. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely and you you can get some damage done and it's it can grow with you too. Yeah. And you just if you want another channel, you just build another channel. Or buy one when you find it used. Because the 500 series stuff, it's you can typically buy that used because it's sat in a 500 series rack in another rack. They're typically pretty well protected. If mm-hmm. it, if it's boxed up halfway decent and the power was okay where it came from, yeah, it's gonna work. <laughs> I mean, in worst case, you probably just have to replace like a, a pot or something that got bent. Maybe like or caps go bad every once in a while. Well, yeah, yeah, for but, sure. All that stuff is super easy to fix because it's right there. All you have to do is pull it out, and you have access to everything, and you can troubleshoot it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered any questions here. You know, I think you you have successfully given me more questions, but in a good way. Um, That's there's no band aid for hardware. It's like, what job are you trying to do? Yeah, and these things could possibly fix that for you. And that is, I can't. I can't. Here's a secret. I kind of knew that coming into this. I, I knew that it wasn't just going to be like, yeah, get this, this, and this, because this is the best price performance for this thing and all that. Like, that's like me saying, I'm going to record uh, a, I don't know, a metal album. What bass should I get? Yeah. There's no answer. No. But what I think I took away personally the most is 
first of all, reignited this excitement of like, yeah, I want a, I want a 500 series that I build and then get a bunch of modules for it and build them all. That sounds so fun you to me. you can do it so cheap. Yeah. So cheap. And if, if that's your route to like another thing to look at, it, I'm not, I know this is already a long video, but, um, oh, is it not here anymore? There's a whole website. Oh, he just changed that URL. Okay. Uh, DIY recording equipment.com. I have stumbled across this one before. There's, there's a test 73 type class A for 400 bucks. Ooh. That'll be the same things you like about the Vintex. See, we're just going all out today. And like, there's, there's so much stuff you can do with the 500 series platform. Yeah. Here's your EQs. Here's a compressor, an opto compressor for 300 bucks. Dang. Okay. The EQP5. You said you like the Pultec style? I do. This is a Pultec for 300 bucks. Dang. I mean, Pultec. Right, but, right. Uh, top, topology of a Pultec. But these circuits are solid. And there's options you can toss onto them. Like you can change out the transformers and um, this may not come with everything. Like you can get the kit, get it vintage and modern. Ooh. Interesting. And is that just like, uh, probably like a transformer. Yeah. I was going to say different, uh, types of transformers and so stuff. You can get it. Ooh, you can get a different op amp. 375. That's a cheap EQ. I mean, so the, the 500 series platform is pretty cool. It's very sick. And the way you can wire it, if you get the X, the XLR version on the back, you can basically use it as its own patch bay mm -hmm. and like go from the input of one into the input or output of one into the input of two and like cascade and make your own pre or your own Signal channel chain, strips yeah. and then plug that into your current interface. Yeah. I like it. I like it all. It's, it's almost easier when you tell me, like, hey, we're going to do a studio build for $5,000. Like, <laughs> that's more specific. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't want to do that. This time. I just wanted to. No. And there's, like, sites like DIY Recording Equipment don't get nearly enough love. And I think people are, are afraid to solder, and they shouldn't be, because you, you can do some damage. Some damage. Soldering is pretty easy. And especially when you're talking, like, Everybody's remaking the same circuits over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's like you're getting somebody's version of a 1073 or somebody's version of a LA-2A or somebody's version of 1176. And it's not like those circuits are highly secretive in what they are. Some of those components are harder to find, but mm -hmm. you can you can do some damage yeah. with 300 bucks, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> well, Jeremy, I think I think we're going to have to to end it on that but i hope i didn't ramble too much did you learn anything no i well yes i learned things <laughs> no i don't think you ramble too much <laughs> i would if 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 we had the time i'd have you ramble even more about it because i still feel like my toes have just been dipped dipping those toes dipping those toes now it's time for record rex Dang it. My kudos came up. Nautilus. Covet. It's another like, I'm into this vibe right now. <laughs> so another kind of like instrumental groovy thing. You can tell I've been in a, in a vibe. Mm -hmm. I like this vibe though. But everything I've listened to from this band is like, just so like floaty. Like if you're on a walk outside, it's perfect. I don't know what else to say about it other than like, it's just, it's chill. It's good. It's a vibe. It's ethereal. I like it when things can walk the line of feeling ethereal and vibey, but also have enough sonic nuggets for you to actually latch onto and, and intently listen to. When they can pull off the like emotional thing while being highly technical, that's always impressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. It's like math rock meets lo-fi vibes <laughs> <laughs> math rock lo-fi beats that you can study too uh, mine I think pulls off the whole providing emotion thing mm -hmm. super well um, <laughs> I 
That was sarcasm. Um, unless the emotion is anger, I guess. But this is uh, Fit for a King is the group. End the Other Side is a song. Um, this one came up because I actually sent it over to the boys as a reference um, for kind of a sonic landscape. I think we should think about exploring for a breakdown. But um, I like it because it's it's very doomy. Like, you know, it has the same kind of um, timbre and breakdown style of of the oh, what's his name Gordon um, Mick Gordon the Mick Gordon stuff but I'll show you that breakdown part super hard super heavy but then the, the atmospheric elements are in there mm -hmm. oh you're speaking my language yeah it's it's just heavy. I had a juxtap uh, have have a juxtaposition of your vibey feel good it's technical like, music. It's like we switch places every once in a while. I we gave do. Alpha Wolf and you did like <laughs> I I did uh what was the one I did a handful of weeks ago? Um you can call me Al. <laughs> <laughs> if we're nothing, we're eclectic, I suppose. We're the epitome of, I don't know, man. I listen to everything. <laughs> that annoying guy. <laughs> anyway, what should they put down? Um, What about like fire? I was going to say, yeah. Or um, I don't think there's like a, a welder emoji or anything, but I think fire fits the, yeah. the theme. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire, but we're soldering. This is true. So soldering. flames, I guess. I don't know. Through the fire and the flames. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, if you made it this far, put a fire emoji. And if you haven't already, consider hitting like and subscribe. Um, if you don't remember, you got to tell us what color it turns to when you do click it. And there's only one way to find out. Super curious. Um, Try it a couple times on your family's accounts and your friends. Maybe make new accounts and, and do it. <laughs> Trying to get to a thousand subs. Help us out. Help us out indeed. But with all that, bye. <laughs> what if this was waving? <laughs>